guys, Thunderstead here, and today we are revisiting Paleozoics. So, this has kind of been a deck way, way back when. We got a new Paleozoic, and you know, some new mechanics to the game. So I'm bringing back an ancient deck of Wetlands. Wetlands is a very unique field spell. All Aqua, Water, Level 2, very specific, or lower, gain 1200. Works out well with this brand of trap card, the Paleozoics. You probably know Canadia, no problem. And you probably know Marilla from Dinos. So they have seen some relevant play. But now we're all in. We have a new boss monster and a new Paleozoic itself. And this boss monster really is enough to round out the archetype into an actual archetype instead of just traps and stuff. I've been waiting for it for a while, actually, ever since I learned it was a thing that this was an actual archetype. So just like all the Paleozoic monsters when they're on the field, he's unaffected by other monster effects. You can activate um, Paleozoic traps from your hand, so you don't have to detach or anything to do that. You don't need material, just him existing. You can use Paleozoic cards from your hand. Now, if he has traps attached to him, which a lot of the times he will, but you can't make him without some traps, you get to add a Paleozoic trap from your deck to your hand by detaching one. Very, very good card here. He's uh, Opabinia. And then our new Olenoids, Paleozoic Olenoids. He will target a spell or trap card. Doesn't have to be face down or face up. It can be either. Destroy it. And then he gets to hop on now as a monster just like every other one so destroy a spell card flip a monster face down obviously not good against links this boy will discard one and draw two it has to be a paleozoic though not just a generic discard target a monster on the field gains 500 till the end phase probably the weakest one so they're only one but these all hop out to the same 1200 monster and they're all 2400 with wetlands and unaffected by monster effects so that's really their strong point. Uh, Marilla sends one from your deck to the grave, and then Hallucigenia will half an attack in defense of your opponent. Or it can be yourself, but usually you'll do it to an opponent unless you're just trying to trigger things to hop on out. Now just to round out Wetlands, I've used Starboy. He's really good with Wetlands, gets really strong, and then just uh snowballs and get stronger the more you get some of the replays i'm going to be using um planetary pathfinder to get to wetlands a little more i wasn't liking it i wanted more level two aquas because there's actually really good choices we have penguin soldier target two monsters on the field return those to the hand for a flip that's also like flip-flop frog who's also a level two aqua that can work in this deck we have Dudark of the Ice Barrier. If the only monsters you control are level 2 or lower, he can attack directly. He's 1200. He would be 2400 under Wetlands. So there's a lot of good Aqua choices. And if you want to use Pathfinder, you can use Pathfinder if you feel you're not getting to Wetlands enough. But you usually have enough stall to get there. And you can buy time with Starboy. We also have a new Starboy, Mr. Starboy. I do try to use him. But you gotta remember your Paleozoic cards are unaffected by monster effects. That even means your beneficial effects, your friendly effects, completely unaffected. So uh, it's pretty cool though. We also have this Marine Cis Coral Anemone. I love the name Anemone. If I ever had a daughter, I would want to name it Anemone. But uh, she targets a water monster with 1500 or less attack in your graveyard. Special summon it to a zone that points to this. You'll see these cards in replays. Pretty cool stuff. We're using Chain Reaction because obviously you use a lot of easy to use traps. So uh, super fun deck. Love the archetype. Love the new XZ's boss monster. We have some others, but they're mostly for the Starboy combos, not so much the Paleozoic. And we can revisit Wetlands and Aquas. They're so rich. We can do just their own deck without Paleozoics later. So this is all about Paleozoics. Hope you guys enjoy and thanks for watching. All right, here we are facing Soul Burner. He's fire, we're water. He's rising from the Valley of Flames. We already have Wetlands, Marilla, and Canadia. He's going uh, debug. Debug. 
bug into bale. Use a circle as mirror. He must already have gazelle or something. Use his mirror. Brings out a second bale and it's pretty... I don't know if that's core. He did have a gazelle though. Throws away the roar. Sanctuary. That's wolf. Sanctuary again. Wolf again. That's gonna let him add roar. Then he sets the roar. So we know the roar is there. This is Salaman Grace in a nutshell. Such a stupid archetype. I really don't like it. At first I was like, okay, people want to like it. Now they're saying it's just so tier 1. And it's just setting. It's just sitting on one negate. You got 2300 monster that can hopefully lower your enemy's monster. But all I gotta do here in this duel is get some traps on the field. He has one roar. What is one roar gonna do for this deck? He can probably time it. I don't think he ever uses it. But he can probably time it a little better. But it's so hard to even know when to use it against a deck like this when you're looking at wetlands. So he's going with uh, Hilatio. We even give him a free point in our Pathfinder. We knock Canadia on the Gazelle. 200 tick. Seems okay. He just brought the Gazelle out, so it's not really going to do much. Hilito once again. Gets a cutscene. I don't think I played this cutscene when I did uh, did the reviews. I don't remember it all, all too much when I did my own deck. So here he comes again, Hilito. We're going to use our Marilla. Chain reaction, but more importantly, bringing out our Canadian. We do already have the Wetlands. So he used his effect to hit our Marilla. Should have hit the Wetlands. But he, how was he to know? He sets a new spell card, so we're going to use Olenoids to destroy that new spell card. It was a bluff, though. It's only a bluff of a circle. Or I guess circle is a quick play, so you, you can do that. But, uh... We top deck Hallucigenia, swing over his monster twice with these two boys. So he still has that Gazelle face down. Going with Bailnix again. Bailnix? Yeah, Bailnix. That brings out, I think that's Jaguar, yeah. For Sunlight Wolf, I, I just do not like this archetype. And then he just stops there and can't do anything because he really can't interact with these monsters from this deck. He's gotta wait for other traps, and even then, these count as normal monsters. That fiendish chain he showed earlier, it's not gonna do anything. Now, I could've won here. I messed this up. I used Hallucigenia in the damage phase. If I would've used it in any other phase, we could've brought out another Olenoids. We could've brought out Pakia, Paikaya, and we could've won with Lethal. Or, yeah, it would have been exactly lethal at 900. I'm still gonna pull off the duel, it's just gonna take a little longer. So here's the Pikaia. Pikaia? Pikaia? Pikaia, Pikaia. So uh, we could have brought that out last turn in one. Here we gotta swing a little more, get through all this destruction. All the while we're chipping at him with, uh, um, Chain reaction though, so we got a ways to go here. We're gonna get really started. We got a star boy, so we gotta make room. We're gonna bring out Mr. Star Boy. Let this boy go. Then we bring out the real star boy, big buff boys. Now he has targets for that fiendish chain I was talking about. Because these boys can't get hit by the fiendish chain. But he plays it. Now we have room for Olanoids. We had so much damage. Look at those water boys over this stupid fire salamander deck. Get out of here with that. Great stuff, guys. Alright, here we are facing Exodia, but this is pretty cool because this deck isn't really made to face Exodia, obviously. We interact with monsters a whole bunch, and as you can see with three Canadia, we need some monsters to interact with, and usually Exodia doesn't give you too many. So we don't set three, we don't want to get bricked on the field, so we only set two in a Hallucigenia and a Canadia. He does give us a face-up monster, but he's unaffected by everything. We do use our Hallucigenia and Canadia in the end phase. 
because they're not going to be much use to us this duel and we need to get bodies on the field as quickly as possible. So it kind of changes how we're looking at this deck. We don't really care what these cards do, they're just means to summon our monsters. Another Hallucigenius. So all our Canadians and Hallucigenius that are completely useless against this deck, but we're getting monsters out. So we swing over his first Incarnate, brings out the head and brings down Incarnate once again. Uses Knowledge, but tries to use it on his Incarnate, and Incarnate obviously is ineffective. So he just wasted his Knowledge there. But that's okay. We're gonna bring out our Canadian with Hallucigenia. I target his monster, obviously does nothing. And, but we are using Chain Reaction. So here he gets the head back, sets a back row. But we're okay, we're still getting plenty of traps. Marilla is finally an easy to use trap. So we're gonna be confident we're gonna use Opa. Now we got Olanoid Searched. And we're gonna use it from the hand. Beautiful combo with these two new cards. Usually how you're going to use it, you search the Olenoids, we're hitting a back row, just some draw power. Probably should have hit the first back row, but it didn't really even have much of a delay. So we're still going to pop this Canadia. Why? To get more Olenoids out. Then boom, Canadia from the hand. Doesn't do anything obviously, but now here's a Hallucigenia. So we have four different... Paleozoic style fossil monsters on the field. We're trying to go as fast as possible. We filled it up pretty quick, but uh, this boy is uh, zero attack, so it doesn't exactly scream speed. Now he's using Pot of Duality. White Princess, not really gonna do anything against us. We're all unaffected by monster effects, even if we weren't. White Princess would only lower us by very little, 600, because we're only level 2. So here we're going two links. We're going to get rid of Opa. We don't need his effect anymore. We're going to go with Coral Anemone. Now she can special summon. Did I say we don't need his effect? Because she's going to be able to special summon him right back. And we're still going to be able to use it from our hand, as you can see with the Marilla. And guess what? Are you paying attention? That was a chain reaction win. All those traps, great, great stuff, guys. All right, here we are facing a Yami Yugi. 27 cards, though. We got the brand new Olanoids, we got Canadia, and we have Wetlands. Pretty good field. We're facing Gaia. It's gonna be real useful. We chain to his field spell. Use the brand new Olanoids. It's going to destroy his field spell, stop his search, and drastically cripple his turn to the point he has to pass. Now here I'm using Planet Pathfinder. You can imagine it was any other level 2 Aqua and it'd be much more useful with Wetlands. For some reason he floodgates it, so that works for us. We can trigger our own Olanoids off of it. Now he's got a Gaia, we're going to Canadia it. Chain reaction still ticking away. We have a second Canadia, another wetlands. As you can see, a little too much wetlands. So maybe just go with more aqua. He's got an apprentice illusion magician out of nowhere. Dark magician out of nowhere. So it gets a little trickier. He clears our pathfinder for us though, which is good. So in the battle phase, we let him do that. Now we bring out our Canadia. Now we can pretty much make whatever we want. We're gonna go with the all new, uh, how do you say this one? Opa Binia? Opa Binia? I don't know how you say it. It's a real word, I'm sure. So we accidentally put him in attack though, zero attack. Here our boy is bringing out Dark Magician with Eternal Soul. So we get a Canadia from it. But look, he can detach, search Olenoids. Now we can use Olenoid from the hand, that's going to trigger from our graveyard still another monster. And we're going to destroy the Eternal Soul. All thanks to our new Xyz boy. All his monsters are gone. Now we can use the Xyz out of there, we're going to bring out Mr. Starboy. Remember, he doesn't buff your... Uh, does not buff 
your Paleozoics because they are unaffected by monster effects. Great, great stuff, guys. All right, here we are facing a set of Kaiba. We're going second. Generally, obviously, a first turn deck. But when we need to go faster, we can. I'm not sure we need to here, but uh, still good stuff. So we have King of Soldier, Star Boy. Wetlands, we're gonna start with some Starboy action. We could have set Penguin Soldier, but we'll get a little more offensive and we do swing into a Master. He's gonna reborn the Master, so, so far this dude's plays have been less than stellar. He's gonna Normal Sign, Normal Summon a Dark Machine in Drillago. The only card your opponent controls are face up monsters with 1600 or more attack. This card can attack directly. I guess that's pretty universal. He's got a Code Talker here. Paikaya. We're gonna throw away this Canadia. Draw two. Bring out Penguin Soldier. Did you see how big Penguin Soldier was with Starboy and Wetlands? He was at 2450. What a beast with that little sword. But he's XCs here. Now, when we XCs with monsters, we can't use our search, but we can still use from the hand. So we can use Hallucigenia from the hand. That's going to trigger Canadia. I accidentally put it in front of this Link monster, so now it got more attack. It can't be destroyed. Because when I'm playing on mobile, I play it tilted. I don't play this overhead view, and I usually will misclick like that. But here, he's using Solid Soldier. He's swinging over my poor Canadia. Should have came at our boy Opa, but we're not pulling traps anyway. We get another Star Boy. Finally, destroy that Link monster proper. And then he destroys the poor Star Boy, but we do have another. We get another Wetlands, so our hand is not really helping us. We set the Star Boy this time. He destroys our Xyz. We get our third Wetlands. This is not good. And he goes boom. 800 damage. I think we get a Planet Pathfinder here. No, not yet. So, um, Hakaya throws away Marilla. He's just gonna get a search or some or special summon of a blue eyes. Well, we're gonna get some trap cards. Yeah, we do get that Pathfinder. So what had happened here? I added the new Aquas like Penguin Soldier, but I forgot to take out the Pathfinder. So I'm actually at 22 cards here, but it's no big deal. Swing over that monster with the little Pathfinder. Any other Aqua would have been better that we replaced that with. Normal summons a Stone of Ancient to go with his Azure Eyes in attack in our face. So he's going aggressive. He's going to go Tyrant Wings. That triggers one of our boys. He thinks that's okay because it lets him attack all monsters or a multiple time. But we get to destroy it with the brand new Olenoids. Very strong. He still destroys one of our monsters. Brings out a Spirit of White to stop Wetlands finally. Should have done that way sooner. And now we have more wetlands, clearly. We're going to exit. Ooh, look at this. We use a Phantom Knight Cursed Javelin to steal a win. He only had 5, uh, 1550 left. Beat him for 1600. No blue eyes in the hand. Talk about stealing a win. Great, great stuff, guys. All right, here we are facing a Yami Yugi. We're going second. Looking like a rank up. Another Pathfinder. I do replace it with Aquas. If you like the Pathfinder, you can keep it. I only ran two. But most of the time, he wasn't getting me to the Wetlands. I had already had it. The point is, you don't use your normal summon all too much with all these trap cards. Here, we're, we're going to start with the Starboy, though. We trigger Destiny Draw. He does nothing with it. We show him a Pakya. Hakaya. I don't know how to say that one. We get a two Hallucigenia. Double the Starboys. We could do an Xyz. But we see that he has a uh, Book of Moon and a uh, White Princess. This deck dunks on a White Princess because we're all so little. We're only level 2. So it barely touches our attack. And we still hit him for lethal. So, uh, so much fun. Such a fun deck. I was getting, uh, what are they called? I was going to say like. It's a nice, the little nice notification they send you. People are nice in this deck all the time on these elves, so it was, it was pretty fun. And uh, fun little monsters, interesting to see. Wetlands is pretty ancient, you really don't see it quite anywhere. It's super meme status. So a uh, cool little bit of rogue support. Nothing crazy, nothing that's gonna break the meta or anything, but boy, fresh and fun duels. Hope you guys enjoyed, and thanks